Grossman is walking up to the podium. Uh, let's listen to. Oh, he's now racing to give a kiss and a hug. He's going to speak right yeah, now. Let's see what here. he'll say. This is not going to happen without Barbara Grossman up here. No. In fact, thank you. Thank you. in fact, in fact, oh, this isn't even going to start until my mother Shirley Grossman is up here. Where's Grammy Shirley? Oh, she's in the back. It's, it may be hard for her to come up. She, she's in the ben, back. Ben, Ben. It may be hard for her to come up, Steve. She's in the back. Ben, if you can bring Grammy Shirley. But I can't. So as Shirley makes her way up Thank there, you, she Mom. gives a wave. Uh, such a big part of the campaign. She did that campaign commercial for him and supported him financially, you too. You know, it's hard to get attention in these commercials. And she said, call my son, Stephen, and tell no, him to fine. smile and visit his mother. So she had I one of the most adorable campaign ads. Let's listen to him one now. one of you and those who are not here tonight in this room, but who are in every one of the 351 cities and towns of Massachusetts, I hope you are as proud of what we accomplished during this campaign as I am here tonight. I could not be more I could not be more proud of all of you. I could not be more proud of the campaign we waged, we ran, we fought, we stood for something that mattered, and I'll get into that in just a few moments. I want you all to know that I just spoke with Martha Coakley a few minutes ago. There will be a unity event tomorrow at the Boston Park. Uh, excuse me, at the Parker House. Uh, I will be there tomorrow morning early. And I told Martha Coakley that I will do everything I can, and I hope every one of you will do everything you can to make sure that Martha Coakley becomes the next governor of Massachusetts. <laughs> I've also spoken to Don Berwick, and I told Don Berwick that this race was one that was fought on values, and the things that we all care deeply about on our priorities as human beings, as Democrats, as activists, as progressives. But this campaign that will begin tomorrow morning is an important campaign. The Boston Globe said it best. They said, the next governor will make decisions that will affect the economic destiny of Massachusetts. And I want to make sure that a Democrat is in the third floor corner office next January, and I'll do everything I can to make that happen. Uh, I have some people I would like to thank. I want to thank our campaign team. Our campaign team is made up of professionals, people who came together in this campaign, from our campaign manager, Josh Wolf, to each and every member of the campaign team. They put together a campaign plan, and we, we, because that's the most important word in the English language. We executed that plan, and we came very, very close to winning this Democratic nomination. And for that, I hope you will always take away from this campaign a sense of accomplishment and a sense of the role that each one of you played in that. Professionals and volunteers alike, we did a hell of a job. I know many of my I know many of my colleagues from my colleague Jim McDonald, who was our first deputy treasurer of the Commonwealth, who's over to my right, to Catherine Burton, who's our chief of staff, and there are lots of people who are part of the Treasury team. One of the things that the Boston Globe said that I will always carry with me in my heart, they said that I have been the finest treasurer in living memory. What I wish they had said which is far closer to the, f to the truth, is that we, together, have created the finest treasury in living memory because it is a testament to the men and women at Treasury, 700 men and women who are in every part of Treasury, that we had the finest team that has ever been assembled in state government to have run this Treasury over the past four years. You collectively reflected credit on yourselves and on us every single step of the way, and I will always be grateful for the work that the men and women at Treasury have done during these past four years. Thank you all so very much. Um, as many of you know, I am blessed to have an extraordinary family. 
Barbara to my right, who my mother introduced me to 46 years ago. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> to my mother Shirley and um, mom how many times have I called you so far today <laughs> I went to Lynn today I was out in front of a school 20 volunteers were out there we were greeting voters and as I got out of my car collectively and in a chorus of 20 in one voice they said call your mother <laughs> Well, Mom, I'll have a little more opportunity to call you, but I hope I haven't uh, fallen down on the job too much. I want to thank uh, our children. I want to thank David, Ben, Josh, Mary Jo, and Becky, because we have three sons, two daughters-in-law, and that equals five, and five children. five grandchildren. I haven't gotten to them yet. I haven't gotten to them yet. I want to thank our children for everything they did and for what they stand for. Uh, they have five children and one of them is here where's Will William William Woo! Grossman right Woo! there Yay, Will! Woo! Will is nine Will just went back to school but we also have Jack and Jack as many of you recall was born at 3 19 p.m. the day that I was privileged to win the endorsement of the Mass Democratic Party at that wonderful convention what a gift in one day to have had another grandchild, a healthy baby boy named Jack, and to have won the endorsement because of an army of activists, and so much of that army of activists is right here tonight. So we thank you for all of that. I want to thank the voters of Massachusetts. Because four years ago, voters gave me the nomination to be state treasurer, and then seven weeks later, they elected me state treasurer and gave me the privilege of leadership to be able to do what we have collectively accomplished over these past four years. I want to thank the voters for what they did here today. We may have fallen short by five percentage points, but we didn't fall short. But we didn't fall. She's verklempt. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, we didn't, but we didn't fall short. But we did not fall short because campaigns are about two things. Mm -hmm. Campaigns are about the power <laughs> of ideas to change people's lives and the power of grassroots organizing to change bystanders into stakeholders. Mm -hmm. And we created an energized army of activists and stakeholders who collectively did so much to make this campaign as competitive as it is and was. <laughs> 104 years ago, my grandfather came to his business, but 114 years ago, he came to this country. He was an immigrant, as you all know. He never got past the sixth grade. You all know the story. I won't tell it tonight. But the last time I saw my grandfather alive, I was a senior in high school. He said, Steve, there were only four things I ever wanted to do with my life. He said, I wanted to have a healthy family. I wanted to educate my children. I wanted to own my own business. And I wanted to give something back to the community. Community service has been what our family has been about for these last 104 years, since my grandfather went into business back in 1910, and since he helped John Kennedy and Ted's grandfather, Honey Fitz, become a second-term mayor of Boston. And during all those intervening years, giving something back to the community is what this has been all about. It's what each one of you is all about. <clears throat> I like to think that Oliver Wendell, Holmes, Oliver Wendell Holmes was right when he said that life is action and passion. He said, I think it's required of a person to be part of the action and passion of their times at peril of being judged never to have lived at all. Every one of you has been and will continue to be part of the action and passion of your times. And whether you're Will Grossman, age nine, or whether you're Shirley Grossman, age 92, that kind of commitment to the people of Massachusetts, to lifting every single person up and giving them the tools they need to be everything they want to be. Somebody asked me a question when I was chairman of the Democratic National Committee. They said, Steve, you're deeply committed to the Jewish community. You've devoted a great deal of your life to the Jewish community, and you've devoted a great deal of your life to politics. Do you see any conflict there? And I said, actually, no. I see them being an unbroken line. 
Because if you think about the words of the prophet Isaiah, that in the Jewish community all over the world we read on Yom Kippur, Isaiah 58 says, if you offer your compassion to the hungry and relieve the oppressed, then shall your light shine in darkness and your gloom shall be like noonday. He says, the Lord will guide you always. He will slake your thirst in parched places and give strength to your bones. You will be like a watered garden, like a spring whose waters will not fail. And you will be known as the rebuilder of ancient walls, the restorer of dwelling places, the repair of the breach. There is a breach in our society. Mm -hmm. And whether it's income inequality, the opioid epidemic, 25,000 children who will wake up tomorrow morning in cities like Danny Rivera's city of Lawrence or in Gloucester, Carol and Kirk's city or in every other city. And they, at ages three and four, have no place to go to learn. There are tens of thousands of people who lack English language skills. And I could go on with the things that we need to do. That's what the prophet Isaiah was talking about thousands of years ago. But that unbroken line goes all the way to Franklin Roosevelt, who said in his second inaugural address, 77 years ago, the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much, but whether we provide enough for those who have too little. Too few jobs, too little education, too little housing, too little health care, too little hope, and too little dignity. And what makes me proud every single day of my life to be a Democrat is as long as there is a single human being who lacks a job, economic opportunity, hope, or dignity, our work is not done. So I have pledged my life, and I will continue to pledge my life, to serve the community, whether it's through politics or service to nonprofit organizations or lifting up the least among us. And that's what this campaign is all about and will be all about in the next seven weeks. And as I said to Martha Coakley when I pledged my support to her, we need to stand together because those are the values that matter so very much. The values of social and economic justice. The values that are summarized in the words in Hebrew of tikkun olam. Tikkun olam in Hebrew, the healing and repairing of the world in which we live. That's what this is all about. You're here tonight late to thank me, but we're here, here tonight to embrace each other. And I thank you for the privilege of leadership. I thank you for being my partners every step of the way. We will continue to work together for those values, for those priorities, for the things that matter so much in the lives of the people of Massachusetts, the people of this country, and the world we care so deeply about. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for everything you've given me in this campaign. Let's continue to move forward and stand for the things that ultimately matter so much in the lives of this great commonwealth we care so deeply about. Thanks so much. Massachusetts Treasurer Steve Grossman conceding that he's lost his bid to become the next governor of Massachusetts. He is pledging his support to Martha Coakley. And we went from John Tierney's very brief